Hi, and welcome to our Facebook Live. This week is National Volunteer Week, and we are so excited to be here with three of our amazing volunteers. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us. We hope everybody out there is staying healthy in this difficult time. Um, of course, we are always here if you need us, and you can find us at the helpline by giving us a call at 800-272-3900. Once again, um, that is our 24 seven helpline. Uh, it's open all day, every day. We are always there, 800-272-3900. Um, uh, or you can go to our website at alz.org because that's always up <laughs> and easy to get to. Um, if you're just joining us, it's National Volunteer Week. We're really excited to be here. Um, with three of our wonderful volunteers that span so many different volunteer opportunities that we offer here at the association. Um, so thank you guys so much for being here. Our um, community, uh, community and volunteer engagement manager, Tessie, could not be here with us today. She is not feeling well. Um, and lost her voice. So she wanted to make sure that uh, we communicated how much she appreciates all the time and effort and energy resources that our wonderful volunteers put into being a volunteer. We could not do what we do without you. So thank you all so much for all of your hard work. Uh, we at the Alzheimer's Association are honored that you choose us uh, each and every day to be a volunteer. So thank you all so much. Um, so without further ado, let me introduce the, or well, let me let the volunteers introduce themselves. Um, so Diane, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself first and tell us what you do here. Hello, everybody. My name is Diane, and I am on the chapter board of directors, the chapter, as you all know, Northern California, Northern Nevada. I joined the board in 2017, and I'm also on the fund development committee, which is a board committee. And through that, I joined the committee for a bright night gala, which is our signature fundraising event. Um, yeah, so I joined that two years ago. Yeah, 2020. Fantastic. Yeah, that's right, 2020. Great, welcome. Uh, Kyla, would you like to go next? Sure. Hi, Jenny. Um, it's my privilege and pleasure to be here with our wonderful volunteers and in front of you, whoever are watching right now. My name is Kyle Chuang. I'm a community educator. I studied as a community educator since 2019, but my volunteer work can trace back to 2015 when I started being the captain for the Work to End Alzheimer in San Jose. And since then, I gradually just involved more and more. So I am part of the Chinese Advisory Commu Committee in the San Jose area. And also I joined the ad advocacy they this year as well, speaking to a congressman uh, legislator about the importance of having a sufficient funding to help Alzheimer's, uh, Alzheimer's diseases patients and uh, uh, care, caretakers. Uh, personally, I have experiences helping, you know, cancer, you know, last stage cancer patients, which is my family, rheumatoid arthritis as well. So I know a tremendous importance about helping and taking care of seniors and the people with diseases. Uh, my job also required me to have a good communication skill with uh, people. So, well, here I am. I try to give out whatever my uh, capacity is capable of to help the communities. Thank you very much. Great, and then last but not least, Annette. Hi, thank you, Jenny. Um, I'm Annette and I am a volunteer with the Northern California Lafayette office, started out as a helpline specialist after I attended a savvy caregiver training. I saw a flyer in the front as I was leaving and I stayed late and I asked, what does this do? What, is it, what do you need? I started as a helpline specialist until COVID came along and the office was shut. So I switched focus to advocacy and um, there was a team of advocates I'm in the Contra Costa County area, so I work with Representative DeSanye's team 
And as of last June, I became the ambassador to his office. So um, I'm really enjoying the different roles I, I get involved with. I've also helped with the walk to end Alzheimer's and had an advocacy table there last year. So hopefully we'll do that again. And this will be my first year going to Forum in DC. So I'm looking forward to that. I did go to the last in-person California Advocacy Day. So I'm looking forward to the national level. That's great. Yeah, wow. There's so many wonderful volunteers here today. So if you're just joining us, it's National Volunteer Week. We're speaking with three of our volunteers. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Jenny Tinklenberg. I work for the Northern California, Northern Nevada chapter, um, and I'm so excited to be talking to you guys today. So we've got some questions that, that will hopefully help other people learn about being a volunteer here and maybe even help them decide if they'd like to join us. So um, let's see here. Annette, what do you like about volunteering? Um, I found the work to be really rewarding and it doesn't feel like work. It feels like a passion. Uh, the people I work with are all pretty amazing, committed people that has the same goal in mind. Let's end Alzheimer's in one way or another, whether it's fundraising, passing legislative bills, getting involved with research. The people I've met, whether it's the families I've talked to or the people in the office or people just updating on research, everyone is so committed to this goal and they're pretty amazing and passionate, very compassionate group and easy to work with. Um, it's very rewarding and inspiring. Very good. And uh, what about you, Diane? I echo exactly what Annette said. It's so rewarding. Um, it's not like work. It's truly a passion. And the board members that I work with and the committee members that I work with for um, our fundraiser, a bright night gala, they're just so committed, dedicated. Um, we all have the same mission to end Alzheimer's. So yeah, it's fun. It's really fun. <laughs> so Kyle, yeah, what inspired you to become a community educator? Uh, yes, so really it traces back to when my family, my father was diagnosed last stage cancer and uh, I was just, you know, starting to my new job at the time. So very limited resources myself to taking care of my father while I also need to work full time. So I was fortunate to run into a volunteer from a cancer society that to come in and help me to you know, come to see my father once in a while while I'm busy and, um, you know, sharing his story and uh, encouraging me. And uh, I'm looking at his back and realize, you know, that's a wonderful job, really. That's something, if there's anything I can do a similar work to other people, you know, in that difficult situation, I would hope to do the same. And um, um, after my father passed away and many years after, and I realized, you know, life can be very busy. You know, there are always things here and there that require us to take care of the family, the work, the school, and all the kind of different things. And I realized, oh, there are opportunities. I don't really necessarily have to do exactly the same job. I mean, within my capacity, I realized I was trying to give a uh, presentation uh, speeches to my, you know, to my, to my temple, my, my religious organizations. And I can use the same skill to help Alzheimer's Association promote, ex expand the community services uh, opportunities to the underdeserved uh, areas, to the people, so they can understand what kind of help they can get uh, if they or their friends uh, unfortunately diagnosed with Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's diseases and uh, they don't know what to do. So here I am, I was, you know, happened to be um, invited to join a volunteer training to become a community educator. And particularly I speak both Mandarin and English. So I was able to reach out more of the groups uh, in the Bay Area. So, yeah, so I, well, personally, I think the inspiration is that, you know, when you see people do good things, 
uh, is a good role model and I want to do the same good things, but, you know, can be a different approaches. So here I am. Perfect. That's so great too, because, you know, like, uh, especially diverse communities, they have a harder time getting access to some of our services because maybe they don't speak the language. So you being able to connect those two things, like connect, you know, us to that community. I mean, that's priceless. That's, thank you so much for that. Um, so then Annette, you mentioned that you're going to forum for the first time this year, which is super exciting. Um, so can you tell us what it's like to be an ambassador? Sure. Um, being an ambassador, um, since I just started almost a year ago in June, um, you're trained to do it. And it's basically a lot of relationship building with the um, elected official staff and meetings, hopefully with the elected official if they're available. Um, going to forum, there will be ambassadors from all around the country. Um, this year is a little different because of uh, the pandemic and pre different precautions. There will be one representative, uh, one advocate per legislative office that's invited. Where in the past, they would send teams of about three or so. So it's just very exciting to be able to interact with the elected officials and their staff, build a rapport. I found in so many cases that a lot of our elected officials relate to our stories. We share our stories of why we got involved, why we're passionate about Alzheimer's and ending it. And we found that so many of the elected officials have a connection to the disease and they get it and they understand and they want to help us get our bills through. And we do work a lot with bipartisan legislative matters so that we get to work across the table and we get things through that way. It really opened my eyes as an ambassador to how long the legislative process takes. <laughs> I never knew how long it takes to get a bill through the House and then through the Senate. Um, so it's been really fun to interact with the officials and their staff, but also to learn. I learn so much every week. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, I feel like with the, specifically with ambassador roles, you end up learning a little bit about so many things uh, in the association about the disease. I mean, yes, of course, with community education and other things like that, like you're, you've got a presentation that you're presenting and you get all this information. But with, with uh, um, being an, uh, you know, an advocacy volunteer, you get to learn a specific, like you're like, here are some facts that I know, and you become like an expert. And it's all, it's, I always, I don't know, I just always love listening to someone in the advocacy, an advocacy volunteer talk because they sound so knowledgeable mm -hmm. about what's going on in the association. So it's great. Oh, one more thing that I started doing since I became an ambassador is tweeting. <laughs> I tweet on behalf of different. Alzheimer's um, legislative bills that are going through or requesting funding. I tweet to my representative and to the state senators. I uh, tweet to the local level officials, our Senator, um, Senator Skinner is the area I'm in and um, Buffy Wick. So it's really exciting to be able to tweet and meet other ambassadors and advocate um, volunteers through Twitter and LinkedIn. So have more of a social media presence now. Yeah, I know. That's great. Another good thing about advocacy too, is that there's, you can do what you're doing where you're an ambassador and you're participating all year long, or you could just come for advocacy day and be a one day volunteer. So that's something that's really neat about being an advocacy volunteer. And I, I love that part too. Um, so Diane, um, I know that you, so you're on the board, which is a huge deal. You're also doing a bright night gala, which is a fundraising event. So why, why the Alzheimer's association? Why, why do you think that that's important? Um, well, I guess some background information is that, um, I've lost many family members to Alzheimer's disease. I lost my grandmother first then my mother, then my uncle, and now my aunt is living with it. So Alzheimer's disease and all other dementias just really, I flip and hate them and I want them to end. And so when, uh, so I'm a scientist by training. So I understand the biology. I understand all the molecular mechanisms. 
And I decided I wanted to raise money to stop Alzheimer's and all other dementia. So I did research to look to see instead of doing it on my own, can I join a group? And the Alzheimer's Association is just incredible. They're the largest nonprofit funder of Alzheimer's disease in the world. Um, so of course I wanted, I wanted to get involved with them. So I started by doing the walk back in 2014. Um, you know, just as a walk captain, um, which I don't think qualifies as a volunteer, but um, did the walk for a couple of years, got to know people, saw the enthusiasm and the dedication of the staff. And um, just, I mean, I, I just find them amazing. The Alzheimer's Association, I find them amazing. And I think if anyone is going to find a cure or a way to slow down this disease or a way to prevent it, probably the funding is gonna come from the Alzheimer's Association. So um, that's why I chose them and I, I love raising money for them. Um, it's like a drug um, <laughs> when I raise, it doesn't matter how much it can be $50. I, I just get so excited because every dollar counts and I know that it's bringing us one step closer to ending this this disease that I really, really hate, really, really hate. Um, it's just, it's awful and it has to end. And um, it's a global problem and it needs a global solution. And I like that the Alzheimer's Association uniquely is funding trials or research in dozens of countries around the world, not just the US, like the NIH, they only support research within the US, but the Alzheimer's Association being a nonprofit has the ability to fund wherever the best research is, that's where the money goes. So um, yeah, I love them. <laughs> That's great. That's great. No, we, this chapter specifically is uniquely positioned to be in like a research hub, I feel like, because we have uh, chapters. So for those who don't know, the Northern California, Northern Nevada chapter ranges from as far south as Fresno, all the way up to the Northern border um, of California uh, to Oregon, and then the Northern half of Nevada. And we here in, uh, in California, Northern California have great resources in San Francisco and Sacramento and Davis, um, UC Fresno. We um, actually, I don't, I don't think it was UC Fresno, but I think it's UCSF Fresno, my apologies. Um, but uh, we've got so many great places here. So a lot of the research funding that is raised, the money that is raised here comes back here just because we have Stanford, we have UCSF, we have you know all of these great places. Um, and then we also have the pointer study is happening in our chapter as well. So we're one of, I think, three locations, three or five. I'm five. Th five, okay. It'll be in the, <laughs> the correct answer will be in the, <laughs> the answer is five. I've been told it's five for sure. <laughs> um, but uh, so we have five, uh, only five locations in the whole nation, and we are lucky enough to have one. So a lot of the research money that is being raised by a bright night gala walk to end Alzheimer's the longest day, it's all coming back here. So which is great for us um, and great for the world because we need the research to help find a cure. So just spot on. I love that. Um, so then, so let's see here. So Kyle, how do you feel like your, your role as a volunteer is making a difference for people in the community? Um, yes. You know, I was very surprised, um, when I joined the Alzheimer's Association and started getting my training to become a community educator, to learn how much information related to Alzheimer's or dementia diseases are there that people don't really understand. Um, like track back to like 30 years ago when I first met my, my, my best friend's grandma who was actually having Alzheimer's disease but people didn't understand what that is. They just think she is a crazy old woman and uh, always trying to get out of the house and always not listening and arguing and um, you know, and basically they just lock her down. 
right, in the house. And, you know, for us little kids looking at the person, we are pretty scared too, you know, what's wrong with the person? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, fast, fast forward to 30 years later, I started my training, understanding more about thermal association. I realized, you know, that's a disease. That's a disease. People should understand. The family should understand. The family's friends should understand and explain to people how to how to communicate, how to respect patients that they don't really know what they are doing. They sometimes have a clear mind, but most of the times they don't. And they did things not on purpose. It's because on their mind, they are losing a lot of track of time, locations, and they don't even know their age. So we, without, without facing the reality, understanding the fact, people can mistreat each other uh, in a way that become a very unfortunate ending. You know, um, the patient didn't get adequate uh, uh, treatment and the family become very frustrated and didn't know what to do. So that make me feel like my role became more important to make sure our community, people around us, truly understand the, the disease, the symptoms, the different kind of dementias. Uh, Alzheimer's is one of the major ones, but there are different kinds too. They have different symptoms, different treatments. So by understanding reality, understanding the fact, we can, we, uh, can react and support the patients, the families in a better ways. And that's where the Alzheimer's Association came, in, came into the place that providing those educations and providing the resources and help to the families. And that's really how I feel like I've been trying to do is to make sure people, when they run into the situation, they know where to find help. And they know there are people always supporting them. They are not alone. Yes, definitely. Um, yeah, and you can let they, you are not alone. We have support groups too. We have, you know, you, the helpline that I mentioned earlier and, um, which is open 24 seven, the website. So it's great that, you know, and we have resources available in Chinese and in Spanish. So there's lots of ways for, for people to get access. And that's a great point. So here's a quick question, generic question for all three of you. Um, you guys all have talked about how you start off as one thing and then you jump to another and then to another. So was it hard to become a volunteer? No? <laughs> Good. Was there a lot of training? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. Initially, because I was doing Healthline, I went through several weeks, maybe even a couple of months of training before I even got to shadow somebody. I shadowed a couple of people for a few times before I actually started on Healthline with somebody listening. So if somebody's interested in doing that kind of work, they're not going to be left out hanging on a limb. They're going to have a lot of training, a lot of support. Great. What about for community educating? Uh, if you ever or people ever in my community sessions, I always like to re-quote Tommy Robbins saying, the only impossible journey is the one you never begin. So <laughs> I rephrase it. The only impossible volunteer work is the one you never started. So it's never difficult. You just need to start and you will find a way to get more energy, get more opportunities to help people around you. What about for you, Diane? Yeah, I would say for the um, chapter board of directors, I was assigned a board buddy. So um, kind of as a mentor. So if I had any questions, I could reach out to them. Although I had served on um, another nonprofit board prior to the Alzheimer's Association. Um, so I, I kind of knew the ropes a little bit. And then as far as being on the gala committee, a bright night, um, I have never planned a gala before, but um, the staff, the development staff, the we call them our um, staff partners. They're amazing. And they pretty much held our hands um, the whole way through so that I hope they think that this second year of the gala, um, we are doing more on our own. And they do provide scripts and templates and 
Um, they're all very, very willing to help um, make it as easy as possible for us. Perfect. That's great. So we're getting close to the end of this, uh, but I want to make sure that everyone knows that if you're interested in becoming a volunteer for the Alzheimer's Association, uh, we have so many opportunities, more than what we've just listed here, although we've listed a ton here. Um, you know, we've got advocacy ambassador, we've got helpline volunteer, community educator who's doing presenting. Uh, we have, you know, uh, uh, I've lost my place, board. <laughs> we have bo someone on the board and we have committee members, but there's also walk to end Alzheimer's in the longest day that also need volunteers. You could be a day of volunteer for an event like Walk to End Alzheimer's, or you can be on the committee for the longest day, um, or the committee for Walk to End Alzheimer's too. There's a million different, maybe not a million, but a ton of different <laughs> uh, volunteer opportunities for all ages, um, you know, young and old. And we would love to have more, more volunteers because the work that we do is so critical and it can't be done without volunteer support. We can't run our support groups without volunteers. Well, we, we can't run as many support groups without our volunteers. We can't do as many education programs without our volunteers. And we can't get you guys the resources that you need so much without our amazing volunteers. Um, we are so lucky to have so many, but we can always use more. Um, so if you're interested in becoming a volunteer, please, please, please go to our website, um, alz.org slash NorCal slash volunteer. I know it's a mouthful. It'll be in the comments. Um, and you can sign up today. And Tessie, who is not here with us, would love to hear from you. So thank you all so much again my to my three volunteers who came today and with, chatted with me. Thank you so much. We've had a wonderful conversation. I really appreciate you guys taking the time. And to all of you out there in Facebook land, thanks so much for tuning in. Um, and hopefully we will see you next time. Have a great day.